G'day, how you going? Ian Harris here from Australia, your acrylic guru. Welcome to my video. Sorry, I'm just eating my breakfast. It's early in the morning here in Australia. But before I do, got a video happening today, a snow scene with a bit of a um, barn or a cabin in there, a little hut on a hill with some mist floating down. Okay, and some light and dark elements as well. Also, featuring a special guest, Hoswina Pathias, she's from um, Rotterdam in the Netherlands. She'll be telling me when it's time to whack a frame on it, so look out for that later on in the video, all right? So I'm using the centimetre and inches there, there's the sizes, and I'll get some um, colours going up the screen as well. While they're going up, I can have another bite of me banana. Hmm. Nature's Mars bar, aren't they, they say? Yeah. Anyway, about to get started. Get you to come over here. Got me Aussie Vegemite up top there, just a bit of a colourful prop. Letting everybody know I'm from Australia, you know. Alrighty, get on over here. I've gone and drawn a rough outline of how I want this painting to go. I'm not going to follow them exact, they're just there so as I know where to put my sky. And obviously my sky will be at the top. Now I've got me craft paint here, just student craft paint, soft body paint with some retarder so I can get a nice sky mixed up there with some blending lights and darks. Okay, so I want to get this where my sky is. This, this white craft paint with the retarder, for those of you who are new to my channel, this helps me blend my blues and lights and dark sky colours and if I'm going to put any clouds. This one won't have any clouds because it's going to be mist. Okay, so I want to get that across. So I've virtually come a third of the way down from my canvas for the sky on this one. Do yourself a favour, watch the whole video before you tackle it, that way you know what you're up against. Alright, just a little tip for you beginners out there. Okay, what do we do next? What do we do next? All right, I'm going to wipe that brush. That's just my two inch synthetic. It's a flat brush, but it's two inches and it's synthetic and I use it for bombing the paint on. Okay, now I want to go for French ultramarine blue. Okay, get that on both sides of my two inch synthetic. And I'll start at the top and bring this down to the bottom there. Now I want this sky to have some light and dark elements coming through it all, so I'm going to get that across. So we have our... I'm just going to get all the brush strokes out of that, all nice and evenly across the canvas. Now over here I want a little bit darker. So I'll wipe that brush, come back down here, pick up a bit of the dioxine purple, get it on both sides of me, two inch. And I wanna get, I don't want it too bright, so let's just dazzle that out there a bit till it's starting to fade away. Like that, like that, like that. Not too dark though. Let's just pick up some of the white that we prepped the board with just to soften it down if you think it's too dark. And we can probably sneak some bits over there. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Because this is going to add the light and dark elements. Now grab yourself a blending brush. Okay, and I want to blend this colour of the blue and the purple together. That's our sky colour, so we're blending that together. Now I'm on a canvas panel, it's a good quality toothed canvas and that's going to allow this blending to happen the way it's happening for me. I'm dabbing on and off. Now if you've got just a cheap canvas paper, they're alright to practice on and do paintings because it'll work like this on the canvas paper but not as well. So this is working for me like this now. Wipe your build up because it's canvas tooth cloth. Okay, we've got some dark there. 
All right, I want to grab some titanium white on my fan brush. I'm just going to chisel it on. Now, everything on the canvas is still wet because we just want to add some more elements into this sky. So I want something... Pick up a bit more. I want something sitting that purple back down like that. Something there. Put a bit on at a time if you haven't done this before. And... I want to blend that down into that purple, it's sort of like a mist there. The clouds whispering and s in front, the lighter values are in front of that darker values here of the clouds and the dark sky. Just sink that back like that. It's nice and damp and retarded, so this is happening. I've got to wash that brush because we don't want contaminated purple on the wrong side of the painting. And over here, I want a lighter value coming in, glaring in. So I'm sort of coming off the painting and fingering it, spider webbing it into the painting like that, okay? Uh, pick up your blending brush. Always as a habit, the way I blend, I have a paper towel on hand as well. Now I've done that purple side. Let's hope, let's do a bit. I don't want to pull any purple into this side. No, that's okay. It's working fine. Yeah, that's good. Now I'm dabbing on and off and little twists, manipulating this white titanium paint into that French ultramarine blue. I'm twisting it, manipulating it, creating all sorts of artistic values there. Something a beginner can learn and do. All right, now we're ready to put our mountain in there. Now I've got burn umber here just on a one inch flat brush. I'll just dip it in water a little bit so it's going to transfer and I'm going to use this to get the mountain on. Now in acrylics we do it different to oils. On an oil painting they normally use a knife so I'm going to work out I want me mountain about here. I'm just going to dot it in first roughly about there. My paint's still a bit wet so that's all right coming down there. That's pretty much me mountain all right. And it can fade away there. So now I'm ready to use this brush, get the edge, if anything, hard and tight and sharp, not broken. Stop about there, okay? I'm just sort of, you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just sort of, this is the bottom foundation of our mountain. Getting the edge nice and sharp. Everything's wet. Now I'm, I'm just scratching it in, pushing it onto the wet canvas there. Okay, because everything's kind of trying and wanting to mix here, which is fine. But this is just to get the base coat down. If you have another way to do this, and you've done a few of these, you, you can do it your way. This, this is a subject you can paint. But for those who are very much beginners and starting, this is how you can follow along. Now I'm going to wipe that brush. I've, I've picked up some more and now I want to, let's see how we go, get some darker elements just down there. Make your mountain the way you want. I'm going to have a look in my monitor in a minute just to see how this is looking because this is going to have snow on it as well. Okay, I just don't like that top bit. I'll just fix that bit there up. That's it. Okay, wipe that brush. We'll pick up another one if you have. I'll just see how this one's going to go. I'm just wiping it. And we'll, because we've got a wet sky here, this is probably going to get a bit misty down the bottom there. But it's not too wet. So it's not really, I'm just blending it down anyway. pulling it up. This is going to be covered with mist and fog, so don't worry about that. That's why we're only seeing this bit of the mountain. Now we've got that. Pull it up. That's, that's the shape of our mountain there. There's one there and there's one there. Now I'm going to just grab some of the white I had in the beginning of the painting, the flow white with the tartar. This is probably 
not enough body to do but I want to just get the bottom here tainted white because we're going to have white mist in front of this so we don't want this to clash I want to get this on there like that okay and then we're just going to softly merge it up there like that. See? And the same on this side. Merge it up just like that. Because we're only going to see from about here. Now I'm going to go for my deer foot. It's a half, half inch deer foot. It's called a deer foot because, I don't know if you can see it properly, it looks like the hoof, the hoof of a shoe on a on a horse but obviously they haven't called it a horse foot a deer foot obviously sounds better and it's like so that's what it is and this is good for freckling and spotting and cracking up things so i'm going to use this with the white okay let's say i might just get a little bit of blue in it just to taint it okay can you see there a bit of the blue we have on the palette just that'll do and I want to... Now don't go over the brown there. I want to get the um, mountain with blistering bits of snow on it. So I'm going to sort of create... Let me have a look at the monitor, see how that's working. That's working good. That'll do. And... We're leaving pockets of brown there because the snow... This is a real rocky mountain and it's not covered in snow neatly. It's all broken up. The edge we can, I'm getting the brush on its edge, just crisping the edge there up and sort of coming around. And we've got pockets of snow falling on the rocky mountain. Yeah, that's looking all right. I just looked in the monitor there. Now I want to bring this other peak kind of in front of that just to add the illusion that there's some setback within the, there we go. Join it up there. And pockets of snow. This is just a simple snow mountain, I suppose. I haven't painted many mountains. There's a lot of American artists out there, out there that do them almost nearly every painting, but um, I'm not. I don't really do them that much. We don't get much snow here in Australia, but this is just my take on a snowy kind of a mountain. Okay, now I'm going to grab the pure white now just to highlight that snow that we put on there. So I want to load my deer foot up. So we can get some cracking pieces of snow on here. Don't, don't overdo it, just sort of, let me have a look in there. Yeah, just something a bit like that. Okay, I have a small blending brush. I want to pick up some of the white. Okay. And I want to dab it off my brush because I don't want it so brilliant like that. And see here, I want to continue this just in front of the mountain there. Okay, very lightly. So we're getting very soft, no hard lines in this mist at all. There's no... This is just continuing that cloud in front there again, and then we'll put the mist at the bottom. I'll show you. Now practice doing this little misty stuff that I'm doing here. With the, Find out what brush is gonna work for you. The brush I'm using might not work for you. Okay, we've put that in front, and I'll just add some dimension over here, just to continue it through. Okay, that was that mist that we put on. See, this is all dry now. Now I want to come on virtually down here and just scoot right up there off the page with some mist. So I've loaded my brush up again and there's the edge. So I don't want to put this there. I want to work, let's say here. I'll just show you in a spot here. Dab it on, dab it on. You'll feel it start wearing away. Get down to at least the bottom of there. And now I'm going to start blending and manipulating that out. I've got to, I shouldn't have put that line there. Anyway, leave some dark of the purple there. Have it, don't all just make it one white glare. Have some artistic look to it. 
and I'm going to look in my monitor and see how that's looking. Now I blow dried everything, of course, before I started this. Get some of that in there. Look at that. That's this is all dry blending, and you can practice this and achieve it, and you'll be so happy. Check out the links in the description below. There's quite a few there. If you ever want to own one of my paintings, they're all for sale. You can message me on Facebook uh, to sort out a purchase. The links are below. This is quite easy and achievable for a beginner. That's why I'm teaching this one today. And you can put your spin on it. I'm just dirty and getting the paint off the brush by I was looking in my monitor and seeing where some more of this soft mist can go up in the mountain there to sink it back and I've just unloaded the leftover paint from the brush on there there's not much in it but there's enough to create that soft altitude cloud up there okay the next color I want to use for the distant evergreens is this green color it's, I've got it in a tube here, it's green grey they're calling it, or an antique green. Well you can mix up this very pale green, just for some distant evergreens. Now I've dampened my fan brush, and I want to load this sharply on there to get the peaks of these trees, these distant ones. So I'm going to use this paint here, and this is going to set back that mist. So this is another layer we're doing now. Okay, so I want to... Pretty much, where are we? I'll come about there. Now we want these to be nice and sharp at the top and evergreeny looking. So we're virtually going to zigzag a, a band now. Stop, load your brush, manip manipulate the end of it so it's getting sharper and keep going along and making this all the way along. See the brush is running out. I'll try that side. Yeah, I want it nice and sharp still. Fix that up. Okay. There you go. Yeah, I'm still going. <laughs> Got to get over there yet. So I'm just taking me time. Turning the camera on and off. So when the camera's on, you're not so bored. Whack your kettle on. Make yourself a coffee. Get yourself in a happy mood. Alrighty, that's done. Now I've gone back to this little blending brush again. And just like here, back, I want to set that back a lot more as well. So what I'm going to do before I put the next layer on, I want to get some of this, like we did up there, Okay, from about there, and now I want to mystify this end of these trees, get it right up there, and bring this bring this mist up to the top there. That way we're introducing it to the top of these trees. Um, and why I didn't start up there is because we would have destroyed it all with that big, thick, heavy amount of paint. So this is what I'm going for but I had to start down here first so I can get the paint to turn out like that so I'm going to pick up some more on my brush looking at it that's looking all right start down here okay now start getting that mist in front of those and bring it down control your movements when you know how your brushes work for you this is what makes this sort of painting what I'm doing now with this little one, easy, because I know how it works. I can control it. Okay, this is all going to be set back by the next layer, but I just wanted some more distance there, like that. Okay, you can see how that's helped the painting out. Now we're back onto this brush here, because now we're going to put the bottom layer on. So back down here with the craft paint and a bit of retarder in there. Okay, because this is going to... We're going to get this for the foundation for our snows because I want this to be nice and merging colour. So I'll just get this on down the bottom, get up to that green first. So, all right, get laying the tools down. There we go. And now I'll get this brush on its edge and work out where I want me land. So it's pretty much going to come down here. 
okay and maybe across up there like that just bring it off the painting it's always more pleasing to the eye this is snow land so it doesn't have to be perfectly straight it can have waves in it now hang on a minute what's going on there this ain't the color this is just the foundation i'm going to have my cabin there so that's all right i'll lose that i was a bit worried about that dull spot there now i haven't cleaned the brush i'll just get the blob off it now i want some phthalo blue i should have used phthalo i'm not too happy with that bluey tone i would have preferred this one in the sky but doesn't matter if you like you use a phthalo blue instead of french ultramarine now we want our very lightly tinted blue snow i'm going to come off there and come down i want to come down this side this is just our snow So I'm virtually, as you can see, get that white ridge off there. That white that I put on there has helped me have this paint lighter because we don't want a stark heavy blue here. We're not doing a sky. Now, how does that look? Anything out of the ordinary? Oh, that looks a bit weird. I'm gonna start mixing it up a bit. Come on, get confident in your work here, Ian. There's our snow. Now we'll get a bit more. All I've got to do is keep playing with it until you're happy with it. I'm getting a little bit more darker blue. The Just the um, phalo mixed in with there a bit more. Just so as we can get some more darker values here and there. Just like that. I'll wipe the brush on the Thing, just so I could sweep that through as well okay I just want to at least bring this bottom a bit darker to bring your eye into the painting there we go see everything's wet and movable I probably want to I don't know we could I think that's it. We can keep mucking with that till the cows come home. There we go. There's our snow. Now we can put some more white on top of that just to highlight it. I've given it a slight dry, not 100% dry. And I've cleaned that brush and I've got some titanium white now. Not the Flow Craft Paint, this good titanium white out of a tube. And I just want to, I don't know, you know how they get their knives on it and scrape along. We're going to sort of do this. Just, I want to leave some sort of shadow elements there. But we're just sort of scraping along the, the sun, or the light hitting our snow there, just like that. Okay, I've done that. Now I'm going to wipe that excess off the brush just so as I can control them now before they dry that's it that's all you need to do boom and that's why I didn't dry it completely because it allowed that to move that's it that's all I wanted to do okay that burnt umber we had before I'm just tainting this green that I use for the evergreens there just to get a darker value of this I don't like the way I've got that coming off, so I'm gonna hide it with a closer tree. Now, put a bit on, and is it, I want it maybe a bit darker than that. A lot darker than that. And we're just gonna have some trees out here. But I'm using the wrong brush for this. I'll 
get the points where I roughly want some. Let's say out here. And I'm going to use my little blending brush because that makes beautiful conifer fern type trees for me I've used in the past. So what I mean by that is I can get these the shape I want with a base on them and a shadow. We call them conifers in Australia. Just something like that. And then these, these trees here, scattered here and there, they can be highlighted with some snow as well. So I'll probably put a few around. Just put them wherever, and you, your cabin will end up where it ends up. Don't worry if some of these get um, covered. Probably put something over here as well, a bit bigger and closer. So I've made this a bit darker. If anything, it's like a teardrop. And then I, when I highlight it, I can create the shadow or pick up the blue and sink it back. And maybe something just about here. That'll do. Now what I'll do is I'll grab that flat brush. I'm just going to dirty it in that paint a bit. Just so as I can do something like this. I don't know if it's going to do the job or not, I hope so. Let's put some sort of darkness on the ground so when we detail these trees with the snow on them, they don't look like they're floating. Okay, I'm picking up some of the good titanium white on my flat brush. And I've put some more burnt umber there. We'll stick with the burnt umber because that's, we'll just use that. So now I'm going to introduce those two colours till I get the value that I want. And I'm using this flat brush because like I've said in other videos, they work like a flat knife and you can control where you want your stuff. And I'll probably put it about here where this open spot is. So we want the end and I want probably the, the front side wall there, maybe there, and then we want a bit of a roof. I'm just going to block the whole thing in in this colour, then we can add the um, snow and the detail to it later. Which, so work out how I'm doing this. Okay, is that in perspective? Oh, I hope so. And we'll just get the bottom. Now that's why I wanted to wet the brush. See how that bit broke? Okay, see how it's breaking up and you'll be forever in a day getting crooked lines and horrible edges. I just added some more water and look at it now. It's always good to have the eaves hanging out of these little roofs. It really makes them for a, really looks like a proper roof. <laughs> Maybe because I'm on roofs every day of my life, I'm earning a living. Okay, so if you can see, I've got this corner coming down lower, just to give it some kind of perspective. Okay, now, I'm bringing the darker colour back into there so we can get some shadows onto our cabin. I've used a smaller flat brush now. And my roof, we're coming here to there. Okay, so get that line in, so to speak. And this will be our shadow under the eave of the roof there. You always need some sort of shadow there. 
then we'll chisel the paint on again and then we're going to come up to here oh I've made my gable a bit steep haven't I and then this gable here we want to color in as well darker get that edge wait till I move my silly brush and hand out the way you'll see what's happening it's given the cabin some dimension there so it's got like a overhang yeah I've buggered this up here I've had it too steep but anyway and then we can bring let's say a door just get it a, a dark door in there follow the shape of the bottom there and then we'll get down the there we go now we can put some snow on the roof I want to get some of this down there first just to give it some all right I've cleaned that same brush and I've got some white and I want to finish it about here on the roof because I don't want to come any lower than that now I'm going to get this snow there's my ridge line all across there on that angle right so I've got my brush on that angle and I'm going to sweep it down the roof like that now turn the brush around and I'll come up from there get some more on the brush just got our snow hitting the roof and we'll just put a little bit on this side as well bit more on the ridge line there we go get some heavier snow on there okay I've got a bit of the white and blue mixed together and let's see if we've got it a bit darker here no we want it darker than that just so as we can create some sort of path coming down in the snow there we go, it can come a bit wider as it comes towards you. This is just dug out into the snow there. Now, there's not much paint on my brush, but um, I'm just adding some elements of high and low spots within this snow sitting on the ground here. So I'm just, I don't know, I have a look in my monitor. How's that looking? It's given it some sense of um, realness a bit. It's not just a, a flat, just some sort of, you know what I mean. And I'm just going to sink that cabin back as well. So I'm picking up just the dark colour I had in this green here. Just a bit of the darker colour. And we'll just kind of put some little bits of pieces along the footpath there like that. Something against the cabin there. Oh. And if you want, we can probably put some close up stuff here. Is my camera picking that up? Yes. These are like um, shrubs, very low down shrubs, just in the corner of the painting here, very low to the ground something that's picked up some snow we'll add some snow onto them as well we'll just get some snow on these little shrubs to sink them back it's just white on that little brush that i like there we go oh and this shrubbery that we put here we want some kind of snow on that as well Put something in the foreground there. I didn't like that white window I put in there, so I just darkened it up and I'm just going to put something like snow if there's snow on the bottom of the windowsill building up. And probably on the top of this door as well, there's snow building up. We could probably get 
some maybe a snow on that roof too while we're at it. It doesn't look like I put much on there. Anyway, all right, I'll get a signature on this and then after that we'll cross over and see what Hoswina Pateas is up to. Okay, I'll just sign it down here. And don't forget to check the links in the description below. All my paintings are for sale. You can message me on Facebook regarding a purchase and the payments are done through PayPal. Okay, let's go and see what Hazwina is up to. Hi, I'm Rosalina Pathuis from Rotterdam in the Netherlands. I have did some uh, tutorials of Ian. This one, this is also a tutorial of Ian. And this one I'm still working on. So, now I want to tell Ian it's time to whack a frame on it. Okay, thank you very much for that. That was Hoswina Patheus from Rotterdam in the Netherlands. Thank you very much for that. And like she said, it's time to whack a frame on it. So we'll get this frame on here. Just to see how she looks. There we go. We've got a acrylic painting like a mountain snow scene. Uh, it's not really my forte, but there's something a beginner can do. It's not too shabby, eh? Okay, and once again, I'd like to thank Hoswina Patheus from Rotterdam in the Netherlands, all right? If you like what I'm doing, you tell your friends, but if you don't, you tell everybody. All the best, goodbye, good luck, and good on you.